episode 42. Professor Trelawney behaved almost normally until the very end of Christmas dinner, two hours later. Full to bursting with Christmas dinner and still wearing their cracker hats, Harry and Ron got up first from the table and she shrieked loudly, Ah! My dears, which of you left his seat first? Which? Dunno, said Ron, looking uneasily at Harry. I doubt it will make much difference, said Professor McGonagall coldly, unless a mad axeman is waiting outside the doors to slaughter the first into the entrance hall. Even Ron laughed. Professor Trelawney looked highly affronted. Coming, Harry said to Hermione. No, Hermione muttered. I want a quick word with Professor McGonagall. Probably trying to see if she can take any more classes, yawned Ron as they made their way into the entrance hall, which was completely devoid of mad axemen. When they reached the portrait hall, they found Sir Cadogan enjoying a Christmas party with a couple of monks, several previous headmasters of Hogwarts, and his fat pony. He pushed up his visor and toasted them with a flagon of mead. Merry Christmas! Password! Scavy care, said Ron. And the same to you, sir, roared Sir Cadogan, as the painting swung forward to admit them. Harry went straight up to the dormitory, collected his fire bolt and the broomstick servicing kit Hermione had given him for his birthday brought them downstairs and tried to find something to do with the firebolt. However, there were no bent twigs to clip, and the handle was so shiny already it seemed pointless to polish it. He and Ron simply sat admiring it from every angle, until the portrait hole opened and Hermione came in, accompanied by Professor McGonagall. Though Professor McGonagall was head of Gryffindor House, Harry had only seen her in the common room once before, and that had been to make a very grave announcement. He and Ron stared at her, both holding the firebolt. Hermione walked around them, sat down, picked up the nearest book, and hid her face behind it. So that's it, is it? said Professor McGonagall, beadily, walking over to the fireside and staring at the firebolt. Miss Granger has just informed me that you have been sent a broomstick, Potter. Harry and Ron looked around at Hermione. They could see her forehead reddening over the top of her book, which was upside down. May I? said Professor McGonagall, but she didn't wait for an answer before pulling the firebolt out of their hands. She examined it carefully from handle to twig ends. Hmm... And there was no note at all, Potter, no card, no message of any kind. No, said Harry, blankly. I see, said Professor McGonagall. Well, I'm afraid I will have to take this, Potter. What? said Harry, scrambling to his feet. Why? It'll need to be checked for Jenks's, said Professor McGonagall. Of course, I'm no expert, but I dare say Madame Hooch and Professor Flitwick will strip it down. Strip it down, repeated Ron, as though Professor McGonagall was mad. I'm sure it shouldn't take more than a few weeks, said Professor McGonagall. You will have it back if we are sure it is jinx-free. There's nothing wrong with it, said Harry, his voice shaking slightly. Honestly, Professor, you can't know that. Potter, said Professor McGonagall, quite kindly. Not until you've flown it, at any rate, and I'm afraid that is out of the question, until we are certain that it has not been tampered with. I shall keep you informed. Professor McGonagall turned on her heel and carried the firebolt out of the portrait hole, which closed behind her. Harry stood staring after her, the tin of high finish polish still clutched in his hands. Ron, however, rounded on Hermione. What did you go running to McGonagall for? Hermione threw her book aside. 
She was still pink in the face, but stood up and faced Ron defiantly. Because I thought, and Professor McGonagall agrees with me, that that broom was probably sent to Harry by Sirius Black. Chapter 12 The Patronus Harry knew that Hermione had meant well, but that didn't stop him from being angry with her. He had been the owner of the best broom in the world for a few short hours, and now, because of her interference, he didn't know whether he would ever see it again. He was positive that there was nothing wrong with the firebolt now, but what sort of state would it be in once it had been subjected to all sorts of anti-jinx tests? Ron was furious with Hermione, too. As far as he was concerned, the stripping down of a brand new firebolt was nothing less than criminal damage. Hermione, who remained convinced that she had acted for the best, started avoiding the common room. Harry and Ron supposed she had taken refuge in the library and didn't try to persuade her to come back. All in all, they were glad when the rest of the school returned shortly after the new year, and Gryffindor Tower became crowded and noisy again. Wood sought out Harry on the night before term started. Have a good Christmas, he said, and then, without waiting for an answer, he sat down, lowered his voice, and said, I've been doing some thinking over Christmas, Harry. After last match, you know, if the Dementors come the next one, I mean, we can't afford you to. Well, Wood broke off, looking awkward. I'm working on it, said Harry quickly. Professor Lupin said he trained me to ward off the Dementors. We should be starting this week. He said he'd have time after Christmas. Ah, said Wood, his expression clearing. Well, in that case, I really didn't want to lose you as seeker, Harry. And have you ordered a new broom yet? No, said Harry. What? You'd better get a move on, you know. You can't ride that shooting star against Ravenclaw. They got a firebolt for Christmas, said Ron. A firebolt? No. Seriously, a, a real firebolt? Don't get excited, Oliver, said Harry gloomily. I haven't got it any more. It was confiscated. And he explained all about how the firebolt was now being checked for jinxes. Jinxed? How could it be jinxed? Serious Black, Harry said wearily. He's supposed to be after me, so McGonagall reckons he might have sent it. Waving aside the information that a famous murderer was after his seeker, Wood said, But Black couldn't have bought a firebolt. He's on the run. The whole country's on the lookout for him. How could he just walk into quality Quidditch supplies and buy a broomstick? I know, said Harry, but McGonagall wants to strip it down. Wood went pale. I'll go and talk to her, Harry, he promised. I'll make her see reason. A firebolt. A real firebolt on our team. She wants Gryffindor to win as much as we do. I'll make her see sense. A firebolt. Classes started the next day. The last thing anyone felt like doing was spending two hours on the grounds on a raw January morning. But Hagrid had provided a bonfire full of salamanders for their enjoyment, and they spent an unusually good lesson collecting dry wood and leaves to keep the fire blazing while the flame-loving lizard scampered up and down the crumbling white-hot logs. The first divination lesson of the new term was much less fun. Professor Trelawney was now teaching them palmistry, and she lost no time in informing Harry that he had the shortest lifeline she had ever seen. It was defense against the dark arts that Harry was keen to get to. After his conversation with Wood, he wanted to get started on his anti-dementor lessons as soon as possible. Ah, yes, said Lupin, when Harry reminded him of his promise at the end of class. Let me see. How about eight o'clock on Thursday evening? The history of magic classroom should be large enough. I'll have to think carefully about how we're going to do this. We can't bring a real Dementor into the castle to practice on. Still looks ill, doesn't he? said Ron as they walked down the corridor, heading to dinner. What do you reckon's the matter with him? 
there was a loud and impatient <coughs> from behind them. It was Hermione, who had been sitting at the feet of a suit of armor, repacking her bag, which was so full of books it wouldn't close. 